Plaza downtown market area today where a 15-foot historical Trojan horse is on display courtesy of the Ontario Health Coalition. The horse will travel through 60 communities this summer and has been assigned the task of warning us of the dangers of health care privatization. The Trojan horse, as the historical story goes, the, the horse was stuck inside a city. It was hollow with the wooden horse full of soldiers that snuck out in the darkness and eventually went on to save Helen and Troy. So the link with the Trojan horse to health care privatization is something quietly going on uh, under the noses of the public. Uh, can you tell me about it? Absolutely. Uh, let me start by saying the reason we got the horse out was we looked at John Tory's uh, uh, policies and it scared the heck out of us. So we decided to do something about it. And our way to getting the message out is it's about the myth. When John Tory says that uh, everything is open for privatization, but not to worry about it because it's going to be publicly funded. It's a myth. It's like the uh, soldiers hidden inside of the horse. Our story with the horse is if the horse was uh, private health care and it's a gift to the people of Ontario, it's a false gift. Beware of the danger of privatization. So when John Tory says it's going to be publicly funded, people relax. Well, I don't have to use my credit card, so there's nothing for me to worry about. We're going to be paying as we're paying now, but only higher. There's going to be more competition for those professionals, doctors and nurses. There's a shortage of doctors and nurses today. So there's going to be more competition with two systems. Two systems fighting for the same uh, professionals. It's going to increase the costs, and it's not going to be better service. Instead of having one long line, we have two long lines. The Globe and Mail has quoted that for-profit clinics are bidding for hip and knee surgeries at a cheaper rate than uh, public non-profit hospitals. Uh, across Canada and the world, uh, clinics are said to damage the public system uh, as complications they produce uh, in uh, their patients, and they, they will end up back in the non-profit hospitals. My question is, why are these clinics not responsible for their mistakes? Is there no legislation that holds them to it for a follow-up, just like any other industry? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I'm totally in favor of it being legislated and there being accountability. What happens in a private clinic is, first of all, they're not going to do that hip surgery if you're a candidate or you have heart uh, uh, problems or if they think that there's going to be complications with any type of surgery, you'll be doing that type of surgery in a public place. They'll take the ones that it's straightforward, profit-making. It, it's all about making profit for their shareholders. There's no company out there that invests in anything just for the sake of investing. It's about profits. When you talk about pri private, it's profits. And back to uh, publicly funded. What John Tory is saying again is it's publicly funded, but it's going to be run privately. So for that dollar that we pay that should be going into health care, Maybe 70 cents will be going into health care. Maybe it's not going to be 7. Maybe it's 60. Depends on their profit margin. There's going to be the profit taken out of it. We believe in accessibility for all and not for profits. We can't have for profits in a hospital. An American hospital, private American hospital, the death rate is 2% higher for, ch uh, for adults, 7% higher for children. Why? Because they're skimping. They're trying to take as much money out of it, not doing the proper cleaning or cutting corners, not using blood cleaning products, and people die. And again, I keep saying John Tory. We don't have a, a, an agenda against John Tory. We're not here lobbying for the liberals. The liberals are just about as bad. They just do it through the back door and a little more quietly. John Tory is like Mike Harris on steroids. It's slash and burn the whole system. Everything is open. Could nonprofit hospitals be compensated for an influx for uh, from for-profit uh, clinics? What's going to happen is whenever there's a complication in these private clinics, it's going to be a 911 to an ambulance, come and get this patient, and he's taken into a hospital, and then the public is going to be paying for those services. Is it possible that Canadians are apathetic and think government has the right to uh, allow profit-driven enterprises help to help steer the agenda of public health care policy towards more financial motives? I truly don't believe that. I believe that Canadians are very well educated, uh, or people in Canada are very well educated, and they do understand. What they might not understand, and I for one believe that, when you hear things from somebody in power or a politician saying, you don't have to worry about it. 
there's no queue jumping, and you don't have to use your credit card. Well, that's fine. But tell the truth. You're going to be paying through your taxes. What do you think the healthcare uh, landscape will look like in the future as the increasing cost of drugs, equipment, long wait times for key services, and the swelling ranks of the baby boom population take their toll on our healthcare system? Well, at the rate it's going, and I know firsthand, I wasn't born in Canada, I immigrated here from Europe, and one of the reasons we come here was the healthcare system and education, two very, very important things in this country. In the last six or seven years I've been involved with the coalition because of the deteriorating or deterioration of uh, health care, downloading, uh, deregulation, uh, people are paying for more, you got to travel further for services, it's becoming pretty pretty bad and if people don't stand up and make this an election issue we're going to be in major problems and I don't see it as a long time from now. It's creeping up, we're probably privatized right now as much as most countries, or maybe more than most countries. And we still believe that it's a public system, and it is, it's our system. It was Tommy Douglas's vision, and what we're trying to do is get people talking about it, talk to the politicians, see what we can do to preserve it. Let's turn this around and make it our system that they're accountable to us for having the best system that we can. We're not a poor country, we're not a third world country, we have a surplus, and we should have one of the best healthcare systems in the world. Privatization in the healthcare industry is not new, confined to specific areas or just an Ontario provincial matter. This is of concern to all Canadians, whether you are wealthy or not. While many politicians speak about healthcare problems, the for profit companies are growing, and some have been listed on the stock exchange. This issue should be on the radar of not only Ontarians for the upcoming provincial election, but the federal election campaign strategists will be peeking around the barn door to watch and learn. For MPTV, I'm Bruce Sutherland.